Um, first of all, I would like to warn that it's talk, this talk might be a shock, since the topic uh, is much different to the topics of the other talks and also to the other papers of the conference. And um, the reason is um, it concludes or it includes much more engineering than the others. Um, and I know that most of you are tired today. This is late. And I um, avoided any formula here. And I decided to just visually show what I have done in this work. OK. This is the outline of my talk. Uh, we'll try to explain something about the background of side chain attacks and side chain analysis. And I will move toward um, collision based side chain attacks and the problems, solutions. Um, and the issues which have been addressed during the uh, last six, five years. Um, and then I will show what is new in this, in this work and what is the contribution actually or novelty. And finally, I will show some experimental results to support the claims of efficiency of the attack that I present you. Okay. Uh, what is this story? And we probably have heard already about side channel analysis or side channel attacks. Uh, we are trying to perform the attack on the cryptographic devices. We are trying to recover the key from a cryptographic device. We are not performing the attack on the algorithm itself. Uh, what we do, actually, we have a hypothetical model for the leakage. Let's say the leakage can be power consumption. And then we compare the hypothetical, the result of the hypothetical model with the actual leakages that we have uh, measured, for instance, via oscilloscope uh, from the cryptographic device. Uh, you may have heard this a couple of times, but I would like to show you visually what we do in a classical search and analysis. Suppose here that's, that this is a part of an um, AES encryption at the first round, that you have a byte of the plaintext and a byte of the key that they are XORed at the first round, and they go to one S box. Um, we have, uh, for instance, a couple of different plaintext byte values, and for each of them, we measure the power consumption like this in time. And then we look at one specific time instance here, and we make another vector corresponding to the plaintext byte, plaintext byte values, and we make another vector like, uh, which is called power vector. Um, and then we try to uh, check for guesses or the hypothesis that we have for k, or part of the key. And for each of them, which of these uh, guesses that we have, we uh, compute uh, the, some intermediate values like a Spox input, a Spox output based on the plaintext that we know here. And using the uh, hypothetical power model that we have, we uh, just compute another vector of hypothetical power values and we uh, make a vector similar to this vector that we have measured actually. We do, it, we do the same for different or uh, the other um, guesses that we have for the key and uh, we again get another hypothetical power vector and so on till and for instance here since the AES and 8-bit values for the key we have maximum 256 hypothesis here. And what we have to do, we have to check now whether uh, or which of these vectors or hypothetical vectors uh, is close to the um, actual power vector that we have measured from the device. By means of correlation, which is a known way, we can compute or check the um, linear relationship between these two vectors or each of these two vectors. And finally, we get a vector of correlations here like this. And if the time instance that we have selected here and the model is correct, for one of these candidates, FN, uh, we will see um, a strongly higher values compared to the others. And we uh, say that most probably this, this key or this guess is the correct guess of the of part of the key. This is a part of the attack. We have to perform the attack on the other plain text bytes or, plain, uh, or the key bytes to completely recover, for instance, 128 bit of the AES encryption. OK. What is the problem now here? This is a classical DP, and it, it should work. The problem is here the hypothetical model, actually. Mutual information analysis try to uh, relax this assumption that this hypothetical model or dependency of this attack on the hypothetical model. Uh, but it has some limitations, and in some cases, uh, still it, it uses a model, and then in some cases, this may not work correctly. Because of this, I'm personally a fan of uh, side channel based uh, collision attacks, um, that they are applicable when you have a part of the uh, circuit uh, in a shared way. It means that 
you have a, for instance, a Spark or module of a Spark in your, in your design, like hardware or software. And then um, in time, different time instances, this, the same module is used for performing the subbytes operation and, and one plain text bytes and, and, and later in the another plain text byte values. Um, the story is, or the way that we perform the attack or cor um, um, uh, correlation, or sorry, uh, um, collision attack is in this way that we um, um, uh, measure the power consumption or collect the power traces for every of these plain text uh, bytes that we have. And uh, we do it the same for another one. Uh, we have for every plain text byte values, we have a corresponding trace or power consumption trace. And then we try arbitrarily to check whether which of these two um, traces are the same. Um, it can be done um, completely exhaustively and check all possible values. And once a collision found, and we, we, we said for, with a high probability, um, uh, a collision happened and two S-boxes computed the same values, then we can easily write that uh, difference between the key uh, or do these uh, two key bytes are the same as the difference between the corresponding plain text bytes that we have selected or we have found the collision, for instance, here. This is actually called a linear collision attack on AES, which is well known from roughly, I think, eight years ago. And um, the problem is uh, dealing with false positive, sorry, false positive collision detections. Since this is not the only case that we have to attack, so, therefore, we have to later perform the attack on, the, for instance, P3 and K3 and so on, and recover a lot of uh, different equations to reduce the number of candidates that we have for the full key. Um, if one of these um, equations is wrong, the chain will be completely wrong, and then the, 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 correct, can, the correct key is not amongst those candidates that left. Uh, to solve this problem, a couple of heuristic um, methods and systematic ways have been introduced and proposed during the, let's say, five years. Um, but we, um, roughly two years ago at Chess 2010, we came up with another idea, which we call it correlation enhanced collision attack. Um, the same scenario as before, we have many different um, plain text bytes and for P1 and P2, and we measure the power consumption for here. First, this box is computed in another, in another time instance. Um, um, second S box is performed. We look at one time instance of uh, when the first S box is performed, and we make one uh, vector of uh, power, power traces or power values here corresponding to plain text bytes again. And we, sorry, and we do the same for, the, uh, for pre two at another time instance here. Um, then what we do and what we have proposed to do is to get the average, average based on the plain text byte or first plain text, plain text byte values, and we get a vector of mean, mean power values here like this that you see from, from zero to F for all possible values of plain text one. And uh, to do or to, uh, to, to get progress, we need to um, uh, guess a part of the difference of the key, means that we select, a, uh, we consider the second set, and we um, um, have the hypothesis of the difference between the keys. And based on this difference that we have made, we made another, we make another um, hypothetical, or let's say, um, a mean mean vector of the power values based on plain text two x or delta k that we have guessed. We do the same um, for all, all other possible values for this delta key, or let's say, difference between the key bytes until, again, uh, 255, and we get uh, 255 mean vectors here with another mean vector of the first set. Again, what we do, we compare them, or we check whether these um, uh, mean vectors are the same or not. The reason for this is that if, uh, if the, for instance, one of the delta keys is correct, then um, let's say um, in all cases, in all situations, the collision happens, means this one should be similar to this, the second one should be similar to the second one, and so on till end. Um, if we do the same and computing the correlation, again, we get another vector of correlations, and uh, one of them should be much higher than the others. Um, if we have selected the correct time instances in both uh, Spox computations, and also if we had enough measurements or traces to uh, accurately or good estimate the, uh, the mean values. Um, but what is the problem? Okay, this attack worked well, but what was the problem that I came with this paper now? 
Um, when we have a countermeasure in our system, when we attack this, uh, or we use this scheme to attack uh, um, some, some real devices, when we have a countermeasure, for instance, like masking, which, which I can call a sacred sharing scheme, and then all computations on, on all shares are performed at the same time, and then the leakage of the power consumption or leakages um, are, let's say, univariate way of the leakages are proportional to the secrets. Um, but to recover such a kind of, um, such a kind of uh, univariate leakage, a mutual information analysis may work, of course. But this attack that I have presented on the last slide, which is a correlation enhanced collision, may not work. The reason is averaging. Suppose here we have different uh, probability distribution functions. Uh, probability distributions, and uh, when we get an average, we will see that the averages are the same. Although these um, distributions are much different to each other, but if we look at the averages, we cannot distinguish them. This is exactly the same. If, if this kind of, let's say, countermeasure exists here, then uh, we cannot, um, and, and then the averages are the same, and then we are not able to perform any attack. But how about the higher statistical moments? For instance, variances. If we look at the variances, for instance, we can distinguish these two from these three, or we look at the third statistical moment, skewness, uh, which shows that the direction of the um, distributions, we can see here that these two can be distinguished from the others. And also for the for the statistical moment or for the order statistical moment, which is called, which is, uh, called courtesis, uh, which shows how sharp is the distribution, we can distinguish these two from each other. Um, that was the, actually the idea, and we tried, or I have tried to use this um, uh, higher statistical moment, the same attack. The, the way of the attack is exactly the same as before. We have the um, plain text as plain text bytes and public values at two time instances. And then instead of getting aver uh, average, we compute the variance, the second order moments. Very straightforward, and we do the same for the all possible candidates that we have for the difference of the key. And again, we compare them by correlation. We get some vectors or one vector of correlation. And again, if the second order moments are available or are leaking through these uh, time instances, that, that one of these um, um, values for the, this um, correlation vector should be significantly higher than the others. It can be done again like a skewness, the same, exactly the same, just changing from variance to a skewness or even higher statistical moments. But what we can do without considering any specific statistical moment, we can go for a general form. For instance, here, um, instead of getting any statistical moment, we can go for computing the probability dis distribution functions or estimate the probability distributions. We do the same again. We have for the second set, for any possible values for the delta key, we uh, go for computing the, computing the or estimating the probability distribution functions. And for all possible thing, finally, uh, we get 256, um, again, vector of probability distributions. And then we want to compare these two probability distributions, for instance, for the first one and for the other one with a guessed part of the key or um, guessed part of the difference between two key bytes. The way that I have used to compare or check the, um, the probability distributions was Jeffrey divergence. OK, I, I left one formula here, sorry. Uh, but um, I have to say that this, um, this divergence or this Jeffrey divergence is, um, is a tool to measure the distance between two distributions. And then if we uh, compare all of them here, we get a vector of divergences. And since, as I said, that this divergence um, checks or measure the distance between two distributions, the lowest number should check or should show the, the correct uh, guess that we have about uh, um, delta key or difference between the key bytes. Um, but there are some practical issues performing these kind of attacks. Um, first of all, when we go for higher statistical moments, we need um, usually much, much more traces or let's say much more samples to accurately estimate the, um, the statistical moments. And um, according to my experiences, I would say that going or checking more than um, third statistical moment may not be useful or may not make sense that much. Uh, this is the one point that if we want to use or look at the higher statistical moment, we may need much more traces than the other 
uh, other schemes. But um, also when we go for a general form by estimating the probability distribution functions, uh, we need to estimate this in, this in a discrete form. One of them is, a, of course, histogram. I know this is not a perfect way, but this is one of the ways, the handy ways that we can use to estimate the uh, distributions by histogram. And again, since by histogram we lose accuracy, we may need, again, much more measurements or samples to perform in one attack. Uh, um, successfully. Also something about uh, Jeffrey divergence is based on the Kupla-Kleibler divergence, but uh, since, uh, since Kupla-Kleibler is not a symmetric uh, measure or symmetric tool for measurement, um, um, I decided to use a symmetric way of uh, Kupla-Kleibler, which is a Jeffrey divergence. But anyone can use any other scheme to compare the, uh, or check the similarity of the probability distributions. Also, I had some experimental results that I want to show you, um, which are based on, um, some of them based on Vertex 2 Pro FPGAs of Xilinx and Sasebo boards, and also uh, one microcontroller, Atkin microcontroller, embedded on a, micro, on, a, on a smart card. First of, uh, let's say, first experimental result is um, a present implementation of, let's say, threshold implementation of present here, present TI, which is which is a work that we have done roughly two years ago, published at Journal of Cryptology. And here is um, one secret, uh, or let's say secret or shared way of um, computing the present S box. As you see here, there are some shares, uh, some part of the functions that they are uh, working um, on, on different shares. And then this computes a box of a present and two different time instances, the same module is used here for another part of the plaintext or part of the key. The same as before, we measure the power consumption and we try to perform the attack using the averages, or let's say first order moments, nothing was obvious, as I said before. It might be not possible to perform the attack using the classical uh, correlation collision attack, but when we, use it, when we use it, look at the variances or second order moments, we clearly we can distinguish the correct candidate that we had. And here is, is a, another figure to show how many um, uh, traces we need to perform the attack successfully. Here is around, I believe, seven million traces. Of course, there's a lot million traces because the device is, uh, or design is very small and it can include a lot of, oh, sorry, it, it includes a lot of noise in the design. And then, uh, of course, we require a lot of traces to perform attack successfully. If I look at, or when I look at the skewness or third order moments, uh, I saw the same. Again, the attack was possible, performed uh, with roughly less number of traces. And when I look at the PDF, or let's say probability distribution functions, of course the attack works again, but uh, we need much, much more traces than skewness. The second experimental result was um, a threshold implementation of AES that I presented last year here at Eurocrypt. And it's the same, the same scheme as before, as, as present, but uh, a lot of more steps to perform the, or compute one A as a Spox. And measuring, this, uh, measuring the power traces again, like before, using an, an one FPGA, Xilinx um, Vertex Pro 2 FPGA. Uh, looking at the averages, the attack was not, uh, was not successful, of course, as I said before, since the threshold implementation, which is an awesome, um, um, technique to contract power analysis attack is um, um, has this goal to um, prevent any first order leakage. And I believe that there are some some evidences that the first order leakages are completely prevented. But when I look at the variances, um, again the attack was working perfectly using 20 million traces. And by skewness, the attack didn't work surprisingly. And finally, by PDF or probability distribution uh, way or general form, the attack was uh, possible, but we need much more traces, roughly 50 million. Again, it was another evidence that when you use for PDFs or we go for a general form, we may need much more traces because we are losing the accuracy again. Okay, this is my last slide. Um, I had another experimental result which was based on the software, means a microcontroller. Which is, perform, uh, which is performing uh, mask, um, mask AES. Here in this step or this time instances, a complete um, mask as box table is reconstructed and then another time instance, in the mask as box is used on the mask data. And then here later in the, in the same module is used to perform the 
same mask operation on the another byte of the, um, of the plain text. And this was the, actually the reason, I mean, uh, um, I did, uh, sorry, I did this, or put this, this experimental result uh, to show how to extend this scheme to multivariate case or multivariate attacks. We need to, uh, in a multivariate attacks, we need to consider two in different time instances of the, um, um, of the power values and then combine these two to perform the attack. Since we are getting some information here about the mask or the, and here we are getting some information about the mask data, when we combine them, then uh, theoretically the attack should work and uh, actually the higher, uh, higher order power analysis attacks are based on this phenomenon. Um, of course, we can perform uh, the attack on a general form by computing uh, the, or having the joint uh, probability distribution functions. And also, we can go for joint uh, statistical moments. Um, but what I have written the formulas it was clear or was very clear that um, when we go for joint statistical moments, it will be exactly the same as doing the one pre-processing step by multiplication, means if we multiply these two points together, and then uh, perform a classical DPA. And then it was, uh, has this meaning that um, when we, we perform a higher order attacks that is very well known to the, let's say, chess community, um, uh, we are doing or we are looking at the higher statistical moments. Um, at the end, I would like to stress that you may ask why this why this attack should work, or why we should go toward, um, high, let's say, um, 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 side channel based uh, collision attacks. The reason is for some cases, for some applications, especially when we want to evaluate one design, as you as a designer design something and you want to evaluate it, you give it to an evaluation lab, and the evaluation lab will check whether your design is appropriate or secure against known attacks. Um, of course, a classical DP attacks should be performed or some kind of mutual information analysis, but we believe that if, if the situation is in this, this way, that the collision attacks are possible, means that one module is reused in one computation, for instance, or one, S, one, uh, one round of the cipher, then, of course, um, correlation attacks should be uh, considered since they are avoiding any, any, um, um, avoiding any um, model, any hypothetical model, and um, they are checking, they are able to check any statistical moment that they, are, they might be involved in the leakages. Thank you for your attention. I'm ready for any questions that you have. <laughs>